Enough continues on 2020 with John Stossel. They preach the gospel of giving to God. But how much of what you give do they keep for themselves? Is it time for someone to say, enough? Go to their phone right now so that we can preach the gospel in the nation of Nepal. We're building a hospital in Haiti. Get to the phone. Make that pledge. Maybe they will do great, great things great with your money. Nepal is hanging in the balance. I'm not the here givers are confident you. that they will. When I give to this church, I know that my money is being put to good, excellent use without one question. Many preachers don't advertise how well they live, like the minister who lives here. Brother Kenneth Copeland! He asked his audience to help him spread the gospel by giving him $20 million so he could buy a new jet. It will never, ever be used for anything other than what is becoming to you, Lord Jesus. This is News 8 Now. But the ABC affiliate in Dallas checked it out. According to flight records obtained by News 8, the Copeland jet, on its way to an evangelical seminar in Australia last October, made a two-day layover in Maui. And another in the Fiji Island. Another in Honolulu for three days of what they called eating and rest. And finally, a trip to a hunting ranch. Here's Copeland and his son John proudly posing with a pair of Axis deer. Copeland's and other ministries point out that they comply with all IRS regulations. But that's not good enough, says this man. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. All Rusty right. Leonard you, is a uh, deeply religious man who invests and lectures about investing in companies that he we'll believes be have Christian-friendly values. Uh, we love God. We also like capitalism. It increased 10 percent, so 25, pressure on the commodities. He knows a lot about money because for a decade, he was a hotshot money manager for Templeton Investments. You had a high-paying job. That's right. You gave it up. I did. You know, when you feel called to do something, you do it. Leonard walked away from a seven-figure salary because he thought it was unchristian that he and he and she and so many others ask donors for money, but don't reveal exactly how they spend it. He says donors are being hosed. Maybe it's all being well spent. It How could do you be. know they're being well, hosed? You're being hosed if you don't know, right? Some donors you call dumb? <laughs> we're all, I guess we're all dumb, right? But yes, all the satisfaction we get is in the act of giving, not in making sure that actual good work gets done. So he started up the research group Ministry Watch. We sent you a letter a couple of weeks ago requesting your organization's latest 990. They asked Christian ministries and charities to reveal their finances. So you call up and say, hi, I'd like to know where your money's going. And they say, go to hell? <laughs> Essentially, especially the bad guys, right? Nobody had ever held them to account from an independent perspective, right? So they were totally freaked out by it. Some of these people have threatened to sue you. Bring it on. And, you know, frankly, they like to threaten that, but they don't actually like to do it. Because if they did it, they would raise the awareness of the whole problem to a higher level. While most charities legally must report their finances, ministries are exempt. Today, Ministry Watch criticizes 28 Christian groups, including some of the most successful televangelists. Benny Hinn, Creflo Dollar, Rod Parsley, all for being secretive, for having little or no financial transparency. Nobody should donate to any of those ministries. There's no per point in donating to a ministry that wants to take your money but not tell you a thing about how they're going to spend that money. It doesn't mean that they're doing anything wrong, but it's a very high probability that something is wrong there. Their attitude is, trust us. Well. I'm human, you're human. If I had no constraints on me, I'd probably do all kinds of stupid things. Donor alerts, these are the bad guys. They're the bad guys. And shining light are the good guys. And, you know, frankly, there's a lot more good guys than there are bad guys. The vast majority, he says, do a good job and spend your money well. But he's critical of some ministries whose financial information he has been able to review, like the one run by Paul Crouch and his wife, Jan. This isn't about money. So she says, but Ministry Watch revealed Jan and Paul's ministry sits in a $340 million hoard and owns houses in this exclusive community hidden behind these very regal gates. They control this mansion worth about $4 million and this even bigger one worth about $6 million. The Crouches also travel the world in this jet, said to be worth $7 million. We would expect that most Christian ministries, the leadership, should have some degree of sacrifice. You, know, you want to see that. Jesus lived a life of sacrifice. These critics 
want us to be humble and poor like Jesus, they say he was. But if God's people are poor as Job's turkey, who's going to pay for it? Who's going to pay to send the gospel to the ends of the earth? It's the devil. It's Satan. If he has said don't give, hey, you're listening to the wrong side. They do some good works, but they could spend a whole lot more money if they, if they sold the house and the car and the jet plane. The money that comes in... To the Crouch's the spokesman told us they have a long track record of financial integrity, including independent audits, and they claim Ministry Watch condemns them because they don't like their theology. Leonard admits he has theological differences, but says they don't affect his financial assessments. And battles with groups like those did strain his will. I really don't want to do it anymore. But then uh, the Lord kind of called us in and said, no, I put you in the spot for this very reason. Ministry Watch now gets 4,000 hits a day, and its influence seems to be growing. After Leonard criticized Joyce Meyer's ministry, she opened up their financial records and sold her family's group of million-dollar homes. She got better after you started doing that. That's right. She responded. Uh, she, I think they would claim at the ministry that they didn't quite respond to us, that they were doing this on their own. She moved in the right direction. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your And Rusty love. Leonard, after spending $2 million of his own money on Ministry Watch, is poorer than he used to be. But that's okay, he says. I've gone seven years without earning a salary now, so, uh, so it's a whole different scenario, but I am more joyful and happy than I was before. In Jesus' name, amen.